Christina here. Welcome to day seven of the holiday card series for 2019. Today's card I actually made for Simon Says Stamp and it was uploaded yesterday at their YouTube channel and blog, but I loved this card so much. I wanted to include it in my holiday card series, so I'm going to be sharing it here today. Um, yes, this originally was made for Simon Says Stamp, but they're allowing me to share it here um, at my YouTube channel and at my blog, so thank you so much, Simon. Um, this card I don't even remember how I initially thought of it, but it's a really fun way to use a Christmas tree image. You could do this with a bunch of other Christmas tree stamps you have on hand. For this particular card, I use the Clean Line Christmas stamp set from CZ Design. That's my friend Kathy Zilski. And this stamp set is perfect for this particular card idea because the trees are very thinly outlined and it gives you the opportunity to do some really fun Copic coloring. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimonSysStamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the Clean Line Christmas Stamp Set from Kathy Zilski, CZ, CZ Design, as well as Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to be creating a very geometric, kind of rotating circle sort of design. Starting out with some 5x5 five five cardstock, and I'm using a ruler, and I'm connecting the corners and drawing a line each way. This will mark the very center of this square cardstock. And then I also used my T-square ruler and drew in some lines going vertically and horizontally. So now I have all these different segments mapped out on my square cardstock. I'm going to do some stamping in intense black ink from Simon. I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring of these images, so I needed to use a Copic friendly ink. Starting out with this first tree image, and I'm using it on the exact vertical and horizontal lines with the point right there at the center. So I'm going to rotate my cardstock as I move around here and stamp this tree image four times. This is going to kind of lay out the basic structure of my rotating stamped image. So now I'm going to grab another one of the trees from the stamp set and this time I'm going to go directly to the right of the previously stamped tree and I'm going to have it be just shy of the next pencil line. And I'm going to have that same spacing as I rotate my cardstock all the way around and stamp this image four times. So for the very last segment here, I'm going to be using the third tree in the stamp set and I'm just going to fill in the gaps and it fits in there perfectly. I'm just gonna kind of get it centered between the two trees and then I'll stamp that down. By the way, I'm using an acrylic block from Simon for all of this stamping and it's, I think it's a two and a half inch acrylic block. So now that I have all of that stamping complete, I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool only because I wanna make sure that this ink is completely dry before I erase the pencil lines. So I erased all of those pencil lines that I drew earlier, and now I'm going to get into the Copic coloring. I'm going to walk you through the coloring of each of these trees, and each tree design is colored the exact same, so I'm going to be showing you how I color each one, and then I'll skip to the next. For this color scheme, I started out with G20 and I just coated the entire green area of the tree. I then brought in G24 and added that color where there would be shading. I then grabbed the darkest color, which is G28, and added that over the, that same shaded area. I then reversed the order of my markers and went back to G24 and then back to G20. This is a different color combo for greens. I started out by doing a full color wash of the YG23, and then I added the next darker color shaded in from the bottom of each line, or right above each line, I should say. I then grabbed the darkest shade and added that over the same area, as well as along the right side at right edge of the tree. I then reversed the order, went back to my middle shade, and then finish the blending with that lightest shade. And I did that for all four of those trees. For this last color combo, I actually started with the darker color, YG99, add a little bit of YG95, 
blends it up with YG93, and then did a full wash of YG21 to finish off that tree. I then grabbed a, a 100 black Copic marker and filled in all of the gaps around those trees. I really loved how dramatic that shading was on the trees, and I leaned into the drama by coloring the background black. I then grabbed an R35 and colored the ornaments on the trees. I also grabbed an R39, which is just a little bit of a darker red, and added a little bit of shading at the bottom of those ornaments on the tree. So now it's time for my greeting. I've got my stamped and colored piece inside my Misty stamp tool. I'm going to coat the area of the center with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to be stamping the greeting from the stamp set in Versamark ink. I'm going to be doing some white heat embossing over this dramatic uh, radial design. And I stamped it twice actually, because this is a very thin aligned stamp image. The type is very, very thin and dainty. So I didn't want to press too hard on my misty door. And because of that, I stamped it twice to make sure that I had a really good impression. I then sprinkled on some Brutus Monroe alabaster embossing powder, and then hit that with my heat tool. Now you'll notice that the words sort of get lost with the high contrast of the trees. So I'm going to use this little itty bitty blender brush from Honeybee with some Distress Black Soot ink, and I'm going to very gently blend over the top of these words, and it's going to darken the area behind the words. Because I did heat embossing and the heat embossing is a slick surface, this ink is not going to stain the white words or stick to any of my greeting. It's actually just going to apply the ink to the area around the words. So I'm just blending on with this black soot color. It's adding some darkness behind the words and making it so it's much more legible and easier to read over top of that very high contrast pattern area. When I was done with all of the blending of the black, I grabbed a paper towel and buffed the area, and that takes off any of the ink that may have been sitting on top of that embossed, embossed area. I then took the nested circles dies from Simon, and I just used the circle as a guide to pencil on a, the, a perfect circle. I'm actually going to be using a white gel pen and adding a border around the outside edge. So I used my pencil, traced around that circle, and then I used a Uniball Signo Broad white gel pen and drew on a dashed line. Went all the way around that circle. And then after that was on and dry, I used a pencil to, or an eraser to erase that pencil line. I did trim down this piece just a little bit and then created a five by five card base out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. I put a bunch of foam tape on the back of my colored piece and then put it directly on top of that card base a little bit of a white border around that area. And I think this looks really, really dramatic and kind of cool. So that's the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Check out that stamp set, Clean Line Christmas from Kathy Zilski. I love how dramatic that turned out. When I initially thought of the card idea, I thought, oh, some green Christmas trees. And then when I added that black background, it just, packed a lot of punch. So I really love how that turned out. I can imagine myself using the technique of putting some darker ink behind an embossed sentiment. I can I could see myself using that a lot, quite a bit actually, because um, a lot of times I do backgrounds and I wanna have the sentiment directly over the top, but I can't do that because the background's too busy. So this will totally resolve that issue. I've been having fun asking you guys some questions to answer in the comments with all my videos this year. So I wanted to ask you guys another question. This was going to be non-crafting related, but holiday related. Tell me your favorite holiday treats or candy down in the comments. Just leave a comment letting me know what you love in the holidays. And that could be for Thanksgiving or Christmas because I know some of you love pumpkin pie. On screen, I've got the three previous years of the holiday card series. So I've got 2018, 2017, and 2016. These are all day seven so you can check those out and I will have all 10 previous years of the holiday card series listed down below in the video description all day seven thanks so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on Monday for day eight of the holiday card series